bet you're wondering why you're sitting here looking at a uh, Toyota MR2 body, some polishing compound, a rotary tool, and some Tamiya compounds. Well, that's because today we're going to talk about wet sanding and polishing. I've heard a lot of people say that you know, wet sanding is not necessary, just lay the paint down, it comes out shiny, and that's good enough. Well, if that's good enough, that's fine. I like to get my paint jobs as smooth as I possibly can. And uh, I'm going to show you exactly what that can lead to based on a paint job that I just did on this MR2. This is a test, a test body. And... I used it to test out new procedures, new colors, and I was testing a color for the Pops Fiero build, and it's a new paint that I got, which um, I'm not crazy about this shade of red, although it may be the fact that I used a gray primer underneath it that changed the coloring, but it's not really what I'm looking for, so I won't be looking for it. I won't be using that. But then I thought to myself after I painted it, hmm, this is a good opportunity to talk about wet sanding and polishing. As I've done quite a few examples of it on the channel on a bunch of my builds, and it really does turn the before into the after. So what I did was I polished just a part of this car so I can show you what the difference is. Now, I didn't go through the entire regimen of wet sanding on this body as this is just an example a sample piece but it will serve to show what a difference the wet sanding can make as you see this is what I started with after I sprayed it um, first most of all this is mostly my fault as I didn't have my pressure set correctly and this particular paint needs to be sprayed at 25 to 30 psi and I didn't do that and then I didn't thin it properly this is a new paint I was trying and thought I didn't really need to thin it that much, but it, apparently I needed to thin it more than I thought. So this is what I got. As you can see, the airbrush was spitting up all over the body of the car. And basically that's what the entire roof, hood, and trunk lid looked like when I was done with the paint job. Not my finest hour. But I did learn quite a bit, and I'm still sort of new to airbrushing, so uh, I figure my disaster can save you from having one of your own. But you can see here all of the imperfections in the paint, very rough texture to the paint. So what I did, I decided that I had this exact same texture on the hood, so I thought, well, let me see what I can do. Maybe I can actually polish this out and fix it. And after a little bit of wet sanding, now when I wet sand, I'm going to explain to you exactly what I do. I take Tamiya sanding sponges. Let me see if I have one here handy. Right here. This is a much coarser grit. And I usually go from 3,000. I start with a Tamiya 3,000. And this is a... I think it's like a 600 or something, I don't remember. But I start with a 3000 and I just start sanding the sanding the paint down till I get all the roughness out of it. Then I start using my other sanding sponges and just start going all the way from 4000 to 12000. And by the time I get to the 12 up to this point I have done everything with water wet sanding the entire thing to lubricate the surface so that sand as the sanding sponges go across it they can slide smoothly and they don't clog up but the 12,000 I have found works better dry as it works more of a buffing pad than it does a sanding pad it's such a fine grit that adding water to it will just actually negate any of the purposes of using such a fine grit on your paint and it'll just glide across your paint instead of actually doing any cutting. So if it's dry, it'll actually cut through the final layer of paint and give you a much better result. 
Now, I didn't uh, sand down as much as I normally would with the 3000 grit because, like I said, this was just a sample piece and I was just looking to see the color more than the quality. And so there's still a little bit of orange peel in it, but you can see this side of the car was after, well, okay, let me backtrack a little bit. I'm moving ahead of myself. After all of the sanding, in which case I sanded the entire hood evenly, got the same about the same type of uh, amount of sanding on both the on both sides of the hood, and then I decided I'm going to polish it out. Now my polishing regimen, composed of using Tamiya fine polishing compound, and then Tamiya finished polishing compound, on a good paint job. Now this one being a bit quite a bit, well, not good at all. Was gonna need something much coarser. Now I do have the Tamiya Heavy pom Compound, which I haven't used yet, but before I got my hands on that, I started using this Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. This really works wonders, and it cuts beautifully through the paint on our models. So I started with this, apply it, rub it in with the Tamiya applicators, and then use a rotary tool to polish it out. Or at least that's what I would do on my regular builds. Now this one I decided I'm going to try something a little different. I took the rotary tool and I only used the rotary tool on half of the hood and the other half I polished by hand. Because I wanted to see how much of a difference it makes and really a lot of people ask is rotary tool really worth it or can you just polish them out by hand if you're going to do polishing at all. Well I would have to say I don't know if you can make it out here but I would have to say the rotary tool is definitely perfect uh, worth it as this side of the hood is smoother and has a deeper color than this side which I don't know if it shows up on the camera, but this side, if you look at it in person, it's almost like a foggy look to the paint. Whereas this is a much deeper, wetter looking red. And, and if you can look at the quality, the reflection of the light, it is just a little bit sharper on this side than on this side. And the quality reflection is another thing I'm gonna talk about as this is the reflection in the paint on a rough, uneven surface. This is what you get after polishing and compounding. And again, I gotta tell you, I didn't polish it. I mean, I didn't wet, well, wet sanding and polishing is what I meant to say. And again, I gotta remind you guys, I didn't wet sand as much as I normally would to smooth out the paint and look at the result. You can see the reflection of my ring light, which is up here, right in the paint. And if we take it for a quick walk around the area, you can see my ceiling lights reflected in there. And you can see the reflections are sharp. Let's take it into the other lighting here. And when you're out of the light, you can see, you can see me. Hey, hey there. Let me show you a little bit of lighting here. And you can see these reflections in here. And now look at the reflection in the back of the car. And look at the reflection in the front. That is the difference between even a decent paint job, which this is most definitely not, and polished paint. If you had a, if you started off with a really good paint job, your polishing would look even better. Now, on a bunch of my videos, I show exactly how I do. I go through the entire process, and it's very, very time-consuming. It's probably my least favorite part of building, but one of the most rewarding when you see that final polish and that final finish.
Now, this has also not been clear coated. This is just paint. And when you get that final polish and that final shine to the car, it is among some of them, for me, some of the most rewarding parts of scale model building. So I hate it while I'm doing it. I love it when it's done. So as far as I'm concerned, I would not build a scale model car without the wet sanding and polishing afterwards. As that to me makes a difference between a good paint job and a great paint job. Or a mediocre paint job and a great, great paint job. Uh, like I said, I've heard people say that, yeah, all this polishing isn't necessary. If you lay down a shining coat of paint, that's enough. And that's okay if that's enough. It, it's up to each individual builder. But for me, unless I can get a mirror-like finish on it, or as close as possible, like this thing really needs some more wet sanding, but I'm not going to bother with that. Like I said, I would just, this was more about color than anything else. This spray here. And uh, it's not as bright as I was really looking for. The red, the color of the red. Um, so this was more an exercise in color than it was in anything else. Yeah, but I just thought it would make a interesting topic for discussion. When you guys paint, uh, how do you get your really nice shiny finishes? Do you go through this crazy regimen of polishing and wet sanding? To get your cars that mirror-like finish? Or do you guys just spray and go? Let me know what you uh, think. You know, let's have a conversation about that. Alright guys, that's going to be it for now. And uh, remember, if uh, you want a shop card, just uh, email me right here. And I'll be happy to send one out to you. Still got a bunch left. And uh, if you want to follow me on Facebook, right there. You can follow me on Facebook and see all the other stuff that I've got going on that you won't see on YouTube. And um, what else? I think that's pretty much it. So uh, why don't we have a conversation about polishing? Tell me what you guys do. Tell me what uh, what works for you. Maybe you guys have a better system than I, than I do. Because this is very labor intensive and takes quite a bit of time to do. Hey guys, I uh, just had to pop back in. I decided to play a little more with the polishing out the paint. And I actually did a little more of the wet sanding here. Now one thing you got to worry about with wet sanding is, I don't know if you can see that there, but I actually went right through the paint on that edge there. You gotta stay away from your edges. On this card, it doesn't really matter, but you always gotta be careful with that because you can burn right through your paint and then there you go. Now you have to paint the whole thing all over again. Or at least a section that uh, didn't work out right. But uh, you saw what the trunk lid looked like before and look at it now. Let's take a walk through our reflection meter. There we go there. A few minor scratches in it, which I could probably get out with uh, some more polishing, but I'm not going to bother with that. But take a look at the light reflection. That is pretty awesome. Let's see if we can see. There's a reflection of the other room there. Let's 
So just thought I'd come back and show you guys that. It's a shame I'm not saving this because this might actually turn out to be a halfway decent paint job with a little more work. All right, guys. That's all there is for that. So talk to me about how you guys polish. So, all right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. And I guess that's it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.